Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a spinning workstation for a 3D printer. Changing the filament on this 3D printer is a little bit of a pain because you have to turn the machine around and when you do, it's hard to access the controls. So I'm gonna fix that. I went through my scrap pile and found a bunch of pieces of plywood, cut them down to 14 and 3 quarters inch squares. I did three squares, one for the base and then two for the box. I cut some pieces for the sides that were a little bit taller than the rolls of filament. Now there's no particular reason to use 3 quarter inch ply for this project. It doesn't really need it. It's just scrap that I had laying around. This is the only piece of half inch I have, but if you're going to make this, I would probably use half inch all the way around. It'll be cheaper and plenty strong enough. I took the side panels off and laid on a roll of filament. I traced the inside circle and then on the top of that made a mark where I should drill the holes. I clamped both pieces together and drilled a quarter inch hole through both of them at the same time. I set the side panels in place and traced the line so I knew where I could safely drill holes. I countersunk the holes and did the same thing for the top and the bottom panels. Then the side panels got glued and screwed on to the top. In the moment, I got ahead of myself and actually glued the bottom panel on as well. I should have just screwed it on because I'm going to have to take it off later to add the drawer. To make sure the spool would hang correctly, I did a test fit with a 7 16 dowel, a little bit smaller than the hole, then I just cut it down to length. I cut a few more pieces of scrap down to make the front, back, and two sides of a drawer that would fit on the inside of the box. I want this to hinge on the front, so I test fit where the hinge would be and then made a mark on the side panels so I knew where to cut off. I drew an angle from the front down to the back at that angle tape the pieces together and cut along the line with a bandsaw. You could also use a jigsaw or a miter sled on a table saw. I measured the shorter side of these side panels and then cut down the back panel to match the height. I also cut down a scrap piece of MDF to use for the drawer bottom. I laid the pieces out and added some glue to all the surfaces that would touch and then just fit the whole thing together. I shot in some brad nails to hold everything in place while the glue dried. I unscrewed the top panel and then knocked it out of place with a mallet. It came off pretty easily. On the front side of the box, I used a spacer to mark for the placement of two hinges. I pre-drilled the holes and then screwed the hinges in. I flipped the drawer upside down and pressed it against the table with my hips to hold it in place. This way I could raise and lower it to align it with the hinges. I screwed the hinges in and did a test fit. It was pretty tight because there was a lot of wood contact on the sides so I sanded down both sides and all the rough edges. I went ahead and screwed the top back on, not gluing it in case I needed to take it off again. I decided to 3D print a really quick knob to use for the front of this drawer. It had some stuff I had to scrape off and sand down so it was smooth. But then I drilled a hole right in the center of the door and ran a screw in through the back right into the back of the printed knob. When I went to open it, it was still pretty tight. I was actually surprised after I had sanded so much. I added some paste wax to the sides of the drawer and the inside of the cabinet. It made a huge difference. Finally, I screwed the top back on, again, and then sanded down all the outside of the whole cabinet. I cut down a couple of strips to the length of the cabinet that would fit alongside the printer to keep it from moving around. On the base panel, I laid in a 12 inch Lazy Susan bearing. I marked in 1 and 3 eighths on each size and used those marks to center the bearing. You can line up the holes between the two parts of the bearings and mark those circles and then pre-drill holes at those locations. Then I flipped over the cabinet, did the same thing for placement but screwed on the Lazy Susan bearing to the bottom of the cabinet. You can see here it doesn't move very well because it doesn't have any lubricant on it. I had a can of silicone spray so I sprayed just a little bit of it down on the inside of the bearing. Once it worked in a little bit you can see that it spun a lot easier. I made a mark in the center of the bearing and lined up the small holes. I used my ice pick to line up the hole in the panel with the hole in the bearing and then drove screws into all four holes. This attaches the bottom panel to the bottom bearing and then it can spin. I fit four spools of filament on the back of this thing and ran the dowel through to hang them up. Then I added all my tools and stuff to the front of the drawer and then it was ready to put in use. I set it in place on my cabinet, put the printer in, and changed out the filament way easier than before. 
So I've only had this in place for a little bit, but it's actually really handy already. And the cool thing is I can put the filaments down here that I use a lot. These are standard colors that I print with. And then any of the specialty filaments that I'm only using on occasions, I can just put on the normal reel. But right there, that lets me store five different types of filament in one place, which is pretty awesome because it gets them off my shelf. So if you've done any 3D printing, you've probably heard that you're supposed to keep your filament in some sort of an airtight or semi-airtight container to help regulate humidity. Supposedly the humidity has a lot to do with the quality of the print that comes out. Personally, I've never never seen that have any effect. And I'm not saying it doesn't, but where I live, it may be that the humidity is so high that it doesn't matter. So for me, all of my filament is currently just stored on a shelf in my office, so having it here is just the same. If you did want to put them in some sort of a plastic container to help regulate the humidity, you could just put that container in this bottom section and it would work exactly the same. For me personally, I'm going to use this drawer mostly to hold tools, but another good use of it would be an enclosed space to trim off the support material. Oftentimes when you print things, it has support material that you have to cut away with some pliers, and when you do that, these little bits fling all over the room. So if you do it in here, when they fling off, they're going to probably fall down in there. It'd be a lot easier to clean out one little box rather than all the floor in your room. So maybe you don't have a 3D printer and you don't think this is useful to you. Well, maybe you have a different tool, like say a drill press, that you could build something like this for. It's really handy to have storage right below a tool that has all the stuff you need to use that tool. So for instance, with a drill press, you might want to be able to spin it around to be able to adjust the belts, and then you want to keep all the drill bits and Forstner bits and everything down in the storage beneath it. So you may not think that the Lazy Susan is strong enough to carry something like a drill press, but the one I got was $10 on Amazon and it carries a thousand pounds. So I hope you like this project and you found something useful in it, and if you did, I would love to hear about it. You can let me know in the comments below or at my website, iliketomakestuff.com. If you want to see what I'm up to in between these videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I love to see the stuff that you guys are working on, so please continue to tag me in those photos. I've got lots of really exciting projects coming up in the next couple months you are not going to want to miss, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those, and I've got lots of other projects that you might be interested in seeing. Be sure to check those out as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.